Oh, and they are playing, and uh, we are off here to the races. Ty Kevin, 83, and JV5 guy. I don't know why Ty Kevin moved his camera. I will get that fixed in a moment. Uh, starting off with uh, Knight C3. Interesting opening here from JV5 guy. Ty Kevin taking control of the center with E5. So like I said, these two have already defeated Fudat. Um... Both, uh, both fairly cleanly, I would say. Um, Ty Kevin, like I said, did this last Saturday. Um, and JV5 guy, uh, this previous Friday, two days ago. Uh, following up with E4 and, and Knight to C6. Um, looking, looking solid from both sides uh, right now. Um, both developing their pieces towards the center, uh, getting their knights out. Um, looking, looking good. Now the question is, is how is, uh, how is white going to take advantage of this? Um, yes, I am still here. Thank you, chess.com. Please stop asking me that. So bishop comes out to, uh, to c4, uh, attacking this diagonal. Putting the bishop in a nice little position here. Um, and uh, we get uh, d6. I kind of I kind of am wondering if maybe bringing the knight out to here and then pushing the pawn out to d5 would have been a better option, uh, which would protect this pawn on d5 and then doubly attack both of these pieces um, in any case. Uh, I think this is I think this is fine for both players. Uh, a little concerned about Black potentially blocking in his uh, his dark square bishop here, um, but uh, I think I think there's still some options here. Um, you know, maybe getting something like this attack the queen here. Um, that will no longer happen. Uh, Knight to, knight to f3, played by jb5 guy, uh, bringing out his knight, um, putting a little more pressure on this uh, on this pawn here in the center. And now we get these two bishops uh, coming together here. Uh, bishop to e6. Ty Kevin potentially looking for a trade. Um... I'm not sure how much I like that from his perspective. Uh, he would have to take back here with the with the pawn, and he does. This kind of screws up his pawn structure a little bit. He's got doubled pawns here on the e file. Um, his his wall is not quite as nice on the king side now. If I'm Ty Kevin, I want to get my queen out, and I want to castle queen side at this point. Um, you know, keep keep your king safe. Keep it behind behind a nice strong pawn wall. Um, I think that's probably preferable for him in this position. Now for uh, for JV5 guy, um, it might be about time to castle. Um, also maybe potentially, okay, he brings out the pawn to G3. And here, Ty Kevin does bring out the queen to E7. He is ready to castle. He will probably do that um, in the next couple of turns is my guess here. And he does it on this turn, castling queenside. Um, you know, this is a this is a pretty even position uh, as of as of now. Um, now, what I don't like from JV Five Guys' perspective is now he's got, you know, kind of a staggered pawn wall here. A light squared bishop can attack through this. Um, so keep this in mind. Uh, he also has not developed his uh, his dark square bishop yet. Um, he plays a4 and immediately Ty Kevin brings in uh, brings in d5, attacking this pawn here uh, on e4 um, and potentially looking to undouble his pawns. Um, however, I would like I would like to keep in mind um, this trade-off. Uh, this this knight is still attacking the square, um, so he's going to have to keep his. Uh... Okay, he moves to to b5 with his knight 
Um, I guess ideas are to bring it into one of these positions potentially. Um, so you don't want to move your knight here because your knight is protecting this a7 square uh, from... Okay. Uh, brings the king over uh, instead to protect that square. Uh, freeing open, uh, freeing up his knight to potentially move uh, into, into play somewhere else. Um, so... Uh, I don't. I do not dislike the move. Um, and also, he's not tripling up these pawns here on uh, on the e file, which would be really bad. Uh, I. I don't. Yeah. If I'm Ty Kevin, I do not want to take this pawn right here. Um, uh, again, uh, JD Five guy continuing to push his pawns on the king side. He still has not developed his dark square bishop at all, and there's no there's no sort of uh, structure here um, for him to castle. Uh, he can't castle kingside really too well because because of the lack of the wall, uh, and he can't castle queenside at all because his queen and uh, and bishop are still just sitting there. JB five guy just gives up his knight um, after the attack by the knight uh, or by the pawn to a six on the knight. Uh, he decides to just go in, um, Ty Kevin taking with his king, um, this does screw up his wall a little bit, uh, I would have actually had rather have seen him take with his queen in this situation, um, but this is fine, uh, you know, he can bring his king back here, uh, to safety later, um, he should think about doing that semi-soon, though, uh, Black is still cleanly winning in this position. Um, uh, pushes the pawn to h4 after, after d3 here. Um, finally, white's light square bishop, or dark square bishop, rather, is opened up. Um, so now, uh, attacking this pawn, um, you know, asking to double, asking for white to potentially double up these pawns, weaken instead, uh, pushes to g5 here. Um, so... Uh, and this this pawn is extremely protected here, protected by the pawn, protected by the knight, uh, protected by the bishop here. Um, so this is an extremely strong square for white. Uh, so keep this in mind here. Um, I could see at some point him trying to push this pawn and then bringing the bishop up to attack uh, to attack here. That might have actually been a better move last turn potentially, um, but. Uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, now, again, talking about uh, talking about pawn walls, his, his king is kind of dead to rights um, here. Ooh, I I think this is what he's thinking right here. Yeah. So the trades off the trades off the knights i think there might have been a better play there for black uh but we continue white does castle but there's he's actually less protected now that he's castled he's got all this open pawn structure he's got all this open area over here like look at these diagonals here you know black can easily come over and, and attack this uh whereas the king uh in this situation you know it was protected by some pawns here um, uh, um, so Ty Kevin does take back here, uh, potentially a take back here. Um, well, uh, let's go over to, uh, uh, the JV5 guy, see what he's thinking. Uh, keep, oh, he actually moves the queen. Um, keep in mind that he is now, uh, below five minutes on the clock. Ty Kevin, over eight and a half minutes, playing extremely fast. Does take the pawn back on, uh, or take the pawn on d3. These these pawns are pushing up the board here, um, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's go over to JB5 and see what he's thinking right now. My bishop, because he's got, oh, he's, that piece is blocked, actually. So he's got that, so that's the weight on that. So I don't want to trade that because I'll lose that. So what I'll do... Ah, it's a gamble, I guess. So you could take it with the... Well, actually, no, he's he's a white. He can only move on black pieces. 
If I do that, I should be fine. So I'm still protecting your stuff. I'm just gonna have to be like forced to move or something. No, it took like. Start taking pieces. That's what I gotta do. So if I can start taking pieces, I can win. There's this piece. This one's definitely. Okay, so we're, we're back here. Um, so Ty Kevin actually missed a hanging pawn here uh, with his queen uh, on h4, uh, which would have put uh, would have put JD5 guy in huge trouble having the queen here. Um, pointing down here, the king's just kind of over here. There's no pawn wall to speak of. Uh, he could have brought over some of his other pieces here. Um, you know, brought his uh, uh, rook over. Um, but instead... Uh, brings the queen down to e6. This is still a solidly winning position for black, uh, please keep in mind. Um, uh, and now JV5 guy's down to three and a half minutes on the clock. Um, five, min five minute time difference on the clock. Uh, brings his uh, bishop up to g5. I think I would have liked to have seen that earlier. Um, however, uh, this, is, this is still fine for black. Uh, he just needs to make sure to move this rook here. Um, also potentially could block here with the bishop, um, and just trade off the bishops, uh, instead goes, uh, with blocking with the knight in this situation. I think I would have rather have seen the bishop just because it is putting more pressure on this bishop to actually, actually make a, make a decision. Whereas now the bishop can just kind of sit there and wait. Um, it also kind of plugs up this side of the board here a little bit um and white comes over uh with check uh rook on a to c1 uh probably should just drop the king back behind this pawn he does so um white does develop uh develop this rook does have this open c file um however the material advantage that black has right now is really really strong so um keep this in mind uh pushes pushes the rook up uh attacking this uh attacking this pawn here on a five um except if ty kevin sees it yep he does uh hangs his rook unfortunate here for white um jv5 guy down below three minutes on the clock So, uh, and now he brings his other rook over uh, onto, onto c1, uh, looking, looking again to attack that open c file, um, putting, this, uh, putting this bishop in jeopardy. Uh, the bishop instead goes down here uh, to a3 uh, in order to attack, the, uh, to attack that rook, force it to move. Um, yeah, this is, this is solid for black. Um, Let's uh, let's go over uh, let's go over to Ty Kevin and and see what he's thinking right now uh, after this move uh, f three. Concentrating a lot, very quiet, waiting for JV5 guy to make a move here. Um, JV5 should probably try to keep this rook, uh, rook alive. Uh, took with the bishop. I would have rather seen the rook just because that would put the king in check in that situation. Um, either way, uh, either way, this is fine. Black is, black is up big. Um, actually, uh, that's a good point. Uh, not the... Not the worst play, I suppose. Um, assuming that JV5 guy does see this here. Um, yeah, this is peace and time advantage. Uh, absolutely. 
JV5 guy down to a minute 20 on the clock. Um, Ty Kevin is playing so fast. He opts to take the bish or take the knight with the bishop, trade it off, and now uh, now Black has a mate in seven uh, potentially with optimal play from both sides. Uh, mate in seven. Brings the queen up to g3, looking to attack this diagonal towards the king. Um, puts the king in check here with uh, with bishop to e3. So the king likely, yes, the king does move here uh, to g2. Um, I would bring the rook down here to c1. Um, he brings it to c2. Uh, also perfectly fine, putting more pressure on the king here, uh, forcing it to drop back to one of these squares. Um, drops back to h3, uh, and queen f5 looks really nice. Queen e6 also looks really nice. Both of those putting pressure on the king here. Um, and he brings the rook down. I'm wondering if his plan here is to take here and try to put more pressure on this queen. Pushes the pawn on B. Honestly, if I'm if I'm Ty Kevin, I ignore that. Just go for the throat. Go for the throat here. Queen f5, queen queen f5, uh, queen e6. Um, you know, you can bring the rook over as well. Uh, Bishop to f4 is fine. Uh, if you do a bishop f4, he does bring it down here. But bishop f4 would have put pressure on the queen, and the bishop would have been protected here by the queen on that square. Uh, king is uh, going to have to block with a piece. Um, queen g4, that's that's your only option here. So you, so you take it here. Uh, actually, take with the pawn. He takes with the queen. Um... So those are traded off here. Ty Kevin taking back on B here. Um, looking, he's got a passed pawn here, uh, so that should be another queen. Um, just take the take the pawn here. He does. Any move other than King G three is a main two. He does go King G three. Uh, moves his rook over. He. At this point, if at this point if I'm black, just push the pawn. Absolutely, just push the pawn. Um, white, on the other hand, needs to figure something out. Um, the king cannot get through here. I want to. I want you to keep this in mind. Um, the king. The king can't do anything here. Uh, he can try to come this way. I, this looks like what his plan is. Uh, black drops the bishop back. Yep, and the king is going to come this way. He his plan is to try to come up this way, I believe. Um, he'll probably just take this pawn in the meantime. He cannot now with that uh, with that rook move. And now, yeah, moving that rook is bad because now the white king can come onto the sixth rank, come up and attack this pawn over here, and look to push this pawn. All right, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a couple queens here, is my guess. King to f6, move the rook over one of these one of these squares. Um, he does move it to c7. Going to push this pawn here. Um, this is going to force the king back, uh, preventing uh, preventing any more of a pawn push here. Uh, Kf5, Ke5. Um, let's push the pawn at this point. Get yourself a queen or another rook. Just get yourself a bunch of rooks. That sounds nice. Just push the pawn, dude. Push it. <laughs> G5. 
JV5 guy down to 29 seconds on the clock. He needs to play faster. Uh, there is... Uh... Yep, there's a queen. Putting him in check. Uh, only legal moves are to those two squares. Um, brings the rook down. This is going to force the king into the middle of the board. Uh, mate in two here. I'd like to see something like queen f1. He goes with the rook instead. Just pushing it up. Um, brings the queen over. Uh, ideas probably to bring it here. Um, and this can't. This won't be a stalemate because these two pawns can move here. You just brought the king back into the middle of the board. Uh, I'd say queen, queen to f8. Um, or you can bring your king into the mix. Uh, you need to be smart here. Uh, if you're if you're black, you can you can get this you can get this uh, you can get this quickly. Don't hang this. Bring it over to a5. Or you can defend. You just hung. Wait. Oh, that's actually really smart. I just realized bringing that down protects the the rook with the uh, with the bishop. Um, bring the queen here and then bring the rook here next turn. That's checkmate. There's actually a few mate and twos here. Uh, queen to h3 would work, uh, rook to c7, um, a, a lot of options here. Uh, white down to 35 seconds on the clock. Don't take all his pieces. Do not do not take all of white's pieces here. Um, King d6 is forced, bishop to e5, rook to d4, rook to c6, all of these will mate, and there it is, Ty Kevin, in 55 moves, defeating JV5 guy, taking group D, uh, congratulations to Ty Kevin, uh, he will face Jensink in the bracket stage, and, uh, JV5 guy, uh, will get a date against Drew Pierce, uh, in bracket stage, 